Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video I am so excited about because I have finally found the productivity tool that will change your life in terms of organization and just getting things done. I recently started using Notion, which I know some of you had mentioned before and I had seen it before, but I don't think the last time I looked at it, it was free. Whereas now it is a free tool that you can use, a free digital tool. There are so many ways that you can use Notion, but I am using it at the moment in this video to show you how I organize my current PhD project with Notion. Now this video isn't sponsored, the reason being they don't sponsor people with under 50,000 subscribers. So if you want to help me get there, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when new videos are up. And perhaps in years to come, we will be sponsored by Notion here. First things first, last video was my 10,000 subscribers special and I was giving away a 100 euro, dollar, pound, whatever, Amazon gift voucher and I can now announce the winner of that giveaway was Cara F. Thank you all so much for your wonderful comments. I would like to start drawing attention to wonderful comments out there so I'm going to start doing a comment shout out for each video. So I'll be picking a comment from this video and this will be shouted out in the next video. So if you want the chance for me to do a shout out for your comment, you obviously have to leave a comment down below. That can be anything at all, but perhaps if you use something like Notion or any other tools like that, throw it down below in the comments because I'd love to hear about it. Okay, so getting back into the video. If you've spoken to me in the last week or so, you will have heard of Notion because I have been singing its praises. It's just so, so good. I'm hoping you will see in the sort of PhD project dashboard that I have, you'll see some of the utility, but you can't even get a sense of how good it is, I think. I'm hoping that you'll get a good sense. I am in the process of developing some PhD templates for not only just projects, but sort of the broader side of doing a PhD and sort of organization, planning, all of that stuff, all of the stuff we love on this channel. So I'm really excited about that. I've been using it for everything recently and I'm just pumped for it. Okay, so here is my sort of landing page for this research question. You can see some like fun features. You can have your own emojis. Obviously my research question is, can we predict injuries from marathon training data? So that's why I use this little emoji, but you can basically use any emoji at all which is kind of just like a fun little feature and same way you can have a cover photo. So again, I just have a runner who was injured as my cover photo and I just feel like that's sort of a nice way to have it. Uh, I have a little space here for my abstract for this project, which I haven't written yet, but I feel like it is nice to have that on the page, even if it's, you know, even if you're at the point in your project where you don't quite know what you're going to find. I think it's a nice way to keep yourself focused on the project and to be able to link back when you're doing your work, making sure you can link back and you can always update the abstract as you go. Then I have this related work section. So as I mentioned, this is a work in progress. So I don't have my literature all totally filled out. I do have all of my notes that I just transferred over from where I was keeping my notes before. So you can see one thing that I really love about Notion is that you can link pages. Basically everything on Notion is a page. You can link from page to page constantly and in any sort of situation. It's basically this very smart software where you can just embed anything. You can embed videos, other websites, and it's just really, really clever. So what I have here is a link to the paper that this sort of sentence is from. Obviously this isn't the actual paper. This is just one that came with the sort of literature booklet. But I can click on that and go to the one if I want to check out the abstract for that paper. Obviously that's not the real paper, but you get the sort of idea. Or I can go back to the literature section and see all of my academic journals in one place. This wouldn't be a place where you would necessarily store the papers. I would still probably use Mendeley or something like that to actually store the papers. But it's a good place to keep notes on the papers and it's a good way to sort of keep that organised. So just heading back to the main area now. So that's what you can do. One thing again that I love is all of these toggles. It means you can have everything in the one place without being overloaded with a load of material at one point. So you can see I have lots of stuff all in this one place. Once we start to unpack some of these toggles, you'll see that. So it means I can keep all my notes in the one place. 
and just switch on and off when I want to look at them and when I don't. The next thing that I have are all these research sub questions. So these are things that I want to investigate or have investigated as part of the main project, can we predict injuries from marathon training data? So firstly, just some basic ones, like looking at the types of breaks we have. So even just being able to organize my results this way has been really helpful because usually with Jupyter Notebooks, sometimes I think when I'm working, I have a tendency to work a little bit messily, which makes it difficult then if I'm trying to present to my supervisors the work that has been done in the last week. Sometimes it can be a bit messy or it can be the case where, you know, I have different Jupyter Notebooks for different tasks. So if I want to present a few different things, they're all in different places and I'm switching, scrolling up and down to see where it is, all the sort of code is in the way. Whereas here I have all of my results, all of the sort of main results, as well as any graphs as this sort of board. So it's basically like a Kanban board. You can rearrange these really easily, like move them around if I wanted to. And you can really easily just take a load of images from if you have somewhere on your computer where you're storing all of your thesis images you can just drag those in really easily which makes it really really helpful even just having these you can see again these this is technically a page so if i wanted to i could open this as its own individual page and just look at it in more detail add in any info if i wanted to tag these with anything in particular perhaps if it's for a certain paper or perhaps i wanted to tag them with something saying needs fixing Let's say I wanted to tag that, it means I could then go back to my board and look at them all. So another thing you can do is change the sort of view. So if I wanted to look at this as a table, I could add a table view and just have them come out like this. And then again, I could look at them if I wanted to go directly to it. That might be not necessarily the best thing, but at least I could see tags for which graphs I need to fix if I was looking at you know submitting for a paper that it means i can look at that and check oh which ones need fixing oh this one needs fixing and then i'll look at it and be i can open this and then be like oh yes okay i know i need to fix this graph even though that one's fine but you get the sort of idea so i'm going to switch back to the gallery view so again you can just see that it's really handy to organize all of your different topics that you might be working on at a given time Another thing that I've really been enjoying about this is just that it's really a handy way to be able to take notes on things in a meeting. So for example, me and my supervisors last Thursday were meeting to discuss the project and as we were looking at this graph, you know, they were coming up with different, you know, things that might need changing or things to work on and it meant that as we were talking about this graph, I could very easily just write in supervisor one said add x to graph so as they're saying that i can just enter that in and then it'll get logged above as a little comment and it just is a really easy way the other the way that i was typically tracking any notes from meetings before was by writing down in my ipad and while i do feel like that works well in some levels i also feel like i it ended up sort of you know you'd be talking about a specific graph perhaps and then it's hard to remember which ones you were talking about at that time. Whereas here, it's like, I know this is about this. So it means I can go back to this graph, look at the notes and really understand what was meant. It also meant that as I was going through this, I think they could sort of see, making sure I was keeping up to what the meeting, you know, making sure I was being able to take the notes, which I think really helped. So I definitely feel like that was a much easier way to present and keep track of everything that was being said in the meeting and make sure that it's now being organized to the right places. So I have sort of similar things for all of those sort of research questions. Another thing as well, if you want to have a full image like your results, so here's the results of one of the tests I ran, you can just put in that whole image and it will be automatically embedded into the page. So if you want a full screen view of a certain image, then that's really helpful. Okay, and then moving on, I like to have all of my work from a given week or a given day just to be out in the open of this. Um, the reason being, I just feel like it's it's more helpful for me when I go onto this to have it open and ready to go. It also means I can link in with my research diary. So if I want to add a new diary entry, I have sort of a template. 
so I just fill in today's date and then I have these sort of prompts in here at the moment and I might change these a bit but it means that I can just reflect on whatever research was going for that day and fill in sort of any info maybe tag it with certain things so this is a research entry I could use this for personal entries as well or perhaps meeting notes so it means that I can just organize these a bit better it means again if I want to look up in the table by different types I can look up just research just uh, meeting notes and things like that and then again you can just sort of switch back and then you have all of the notes again I also can keep track of any future work and add in some um, to do's that are related to the project which is really helpful and also link to my research plan so I am still quite new to Notion in a way. I've been playing around with lots of the different features, but I feel like it's really going to be something that I stick to using because I've only been using it for a couple of weeks and I've been finding it so helpful for pretty much all organization. So I really do recommend. I think it's really, really good and it's free. So that is a big plus as well. I've been playing around with some of the planning as well as some templates. So you might see those coming soon, some PhD and productivity templates. So do be sure to subscribe so that you can stick around and know when I have those out for you. That is it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful and I hope you're as excited to start using Notion as I was a couple of weeks ago. This is just the beginning of hopefully many more videos to come about sort of planning, getting organized in Notion, getting my life together in Notion. But this was the first step. So organizing one PhD project in Notion. Let me know if you have something similar going on. I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. If you want to see future videos like this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up so that I know you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks to all of my wonderful members and I will see you all in the next video.